These are thoracic radiology board view cases, and the topic of this group are infections. What's your best diagnosis? The best diagnosis for this case is post-primary or reactivation tuberculosis. TB mimics such as non-tubercular mycobacterial infections and endemic fungal infections can on occasion present with this reactivation TB pattern too. In which TB infection setting could this appearance occur? It turns out that any of these situations, recent primary TB infection, reactivation of remote TB infection, or TB reinfection in an endemic setting, could result in a fibrocavitary upper lung infection pattern like we see here. In TB, what are things that cavitation may directly correlate with? Cavitation in the setting of TB is associated with increased organism load, less favorable treatment outcomes, increased risk of acquiring drug resistance, and a greater infection risk to others. What's your best diagnosis? The best diagnosis is non-invasive aspergillosis infection. The appearance of a mobile mass within a lung cavity is called the monode sign, which should not be confused with the air crescent sign. What's the most concerning complication in the setting of a mycetoma? The most concerning complication is hemorrhage and hemoptysis. What's the most common pre-existing condition in patients with non-invasive aspergillosis? The most common pre-existing conditions are ones that create a cavity in which the non-invasive aspergillosis can occupy, such as sarcoidosis in the United States and tuberculosis in the developing world. List at least three ways a mycetoma may be managed. Oral antifungals can be tried, but may be of limited use as it can be difficult for the antifungal to make it inside the cavity. Intracavitary injection of an antifungal like amphotericin by interventional radiology is an option, as is surgical resection. In cases of acute massive hemoptysis from a mycetoma, bronchial artery embolization may be performed by interventional radiology. What's your differential diagnosis for this case? The imaging finding is in the upper right lung and may be either a cavitary mass with indistinct margins or cavitary consolidation. The differential diagnosis for a lung mass is this. Almost every one of these items can cavitate with the exception of PMF. Pulmonary hematomas can exhibit apparent cavitation when there's a pulmonary laceration associated with them. Now, the differential diagnosis for non-diffuse consolidation, acute or chronic, is this. Of these items, pulmonary edema and alveolar hemorrhage won't cavitate. And it's also unlikely organizing pneumonia, pulmonary lymphoma, and mucinous or lipidic adenocarcinomas will cavitate either. You'll notice now that there's some overlap between this cavitary consolidation list we've built and our cavitary mass list. If we eliminate all the duplications, we end up with this differential diagnosis. This particular case happened to be an example of Klebsiella pneumonia. What's the most common setting for Klebsiella pneumonia? The most common setting for Klebsiella pneumonia 
is as a healthcare-associated pneumonia in a sick patient. There are many ways of categorizing pneumonias by setting, and here is a table summarizing how I categorize them. What's your best diagnosis? This is a good example of POTS disease. Characteristics of POTS disease include spread of infection that's most pronounced beneath the anterior longitudinal ligament, usually sparing the posterior elements, loss of intervertebral disc spaces, and involvement of multiple contiguous vertebral bodies, resulting in a gibbous deformity of the thoracic spine. On this patient's chest CT, we saw that this case of tuberculosis is presenting as bilateral consolidation and bilateral pleural effusions, which were eventually diagnosed as tubercular empyemas. What screening test would you offer this patient? For a patient with tuberculosis presenting as consolidation, tubercular empyemas, and POTS disease, it'd be a good idea to screen for HIV. In which populations are POTS disease most often encountered? Common populations would include patients with impaired cellular immunity, such as HIV, prisoners, and the homeless. What's your differential diagnosis for these opacities? There is extensive multifocal bilateral consolidation with areas of associated ground glass opacity too. The differential diagnosis for this case of extensive, albeit still non-diffuse, consolidation would look like this. We could narrow down this list a lot if prior imaging and history were available to establish if this were an acute or, cr or chronic consolidative process. In this particular case, this was an ED patient who had decompensated relatively rapidly and who was diagnosed with influenza. Which of the following statements about influenza is true? All of these statements are true. Influenza viruses are RNA viruses. Pleural effusions are uncommon. Chest x-rays can show both diffuse or non-diffuse lung opacity patterns. Most cases resolve by around three weeks. What's your best diagnosis in this patient with fever and HIV? In this patient, diffuse isolated ground glass passes would be considered pneumocystis until proven otherwise. Which of the following statements about pneumocystis is true? The true statement is B, pleural effusion is very uncommon in the setting of PJP. The other statements are false. Pneumatoceles and the spontaneous pneumothoraces associated with them may often require pleuridesis or surgery. What's a diagnostic test of choice for pneumocystis? The diagnostic test of choice is bronchovular lavage. What's your differential diagnosis? For a lung mass like this one, our differential diagnosis would be this. In this particular case, the mass represented necardia infection.
true or false, the normal rate, the normal ratio of pulmonary artery diameter to its adjacent airway is around two to one. That's true. What's your best diagnosis for this patient? On this image, there is an asymmetric multifocal distribution of bronchiectatic airways and a micronodular interstitial pattern that may either be tree and bud or bronchovascular in type. In the setting of airway disease as exemplified by the bronchiectasis, I'd favor tree and bud. These findings and their distribution are typical for non-tubercular mycobacterial infections like MAI, for example, which is not clinically associated with non-tubercular mycobacterial infections. Cough, weakness, weight loss, and hemoptysis can be encountered in non-tubercular mycobacterial infections, but fever is less common. What's your best diagnosis? Very conspicuous node signs are present in the upper through mid regions of both lungs, indicative of non-invasive aspergillosis. Name a common underlying condition in patients with mycetomas. The most common underlying conditions that can create the cavities in which a mycetoma can occupy are sarcoidosis, tuberculosis, and cystic fibrosis. All of the following about mycetomas are true except So yes, the mycetoma mass usually represents mucus, fungal hyphae, and cellular debris. Yes, they're usually associated um, with pleural thickening. Um, yes, up to 10% may spontaneous resolve. Statement D, however, is false. Most cases are usually unilateral. What's your best diagnosis? There is an extensive nodular pattern throughout the posterior portions of both lower lobes that's either tree and bud or multi -acinar. In either case, our best diagnosis would be aspiration-induced lung infection, which is what this was a case of. What are most common sites of aspiration pneumonia in predominantly recumbent patients? The most common sites of aspiration pneumonia in a predominantly recumbent patient would include the posterior segments of both upper lobes and superior segments of both lower lobes. What are the most common sites of aspiration pneumonia in predominantly upright patients? The most common sites of aspiration pneumonia in predominantly upright patients are the posterior basal segments of both lower lobes, the right middle lobe, and the lingula. When does pneumocystis most commonly occur in HIV-positive patients? The correct answer is at CD4 counts of under 200. Folks at risk for PJP, or pneumocystis, are individuals with HIV, an organ transplant, or on high-dose corticosteroids. What's the most common CT finding in patients with pneumocystis? The most common CT finding are ground glass lung opacities. Tree and bud pattern opacities are usually not seen with pneumocystis. While consolidation and cysts are also possible, they're not as common as ground glass opacities with pneumocystis. The cysts or pneumatocils in pneumocystis place a patient at risk for spontaneous pneumothorax. These cysts are upper lobe predominant and are more widely scattered than in other cystic lung diseases.
What's your differential diagnosis for this large lung nodule? For a nonspecific large lung nodule, I'd always consider primary lung cancer, a lung metastasis, or pulmonary hamartoma. Pulmonary hamartomas usually would be well circumscribed and have clean margins. So I don't know if I like this nodule for hamartoma because it's a lot larger than most hamartomas and it has some heterogeneous subsolid opacities along its margins. In the correct geographic setting, endemic fungal infection is a possible explanation. And if the patient were an organ transplant patient, invasive aspergillosis, PTLD, and nocardia would be possible. Lastly, if uh, these were multiple and peripheral, uh, disorders like septic emboli and necrobiotic nodules would be possible explanations. This ended up being a solitary nodule, so I'd exclude the last two items on this list. So we're left with this differential diagnosis. In this patient, the diagnosis ended up being nocardia. Common CT findings of nocardia include all except B. Lymphadenopathy. Possible presentations of nocardia in the lungs include consolidation, nodules, and masses. Ground glass halos may be seen around nocardia, nodules, and masses, and these nodules and masses can sometimes cavitate. What's your differential diagnosis in this 31-year-old renal transplant recipient? So here we have something that's straggling the boundary between a mass and a large lung nodule with a ground glass halo around its margins. So let's build out a differential diagnosis from both approaches. Approaching this as a mass, our differential diagnosis would include these choices. PMF is a condition associated with long-term pneumoconiosis, as there's no evidence of pneumoconiosis elsewhere and no architectural distortion associated with this mid, not upper lung finding, I'd eliminate PMF. Approaching this as a large lung nodule, our differential diagnosis would be this. We don't see ground glass halos, nodules of this size and margins this irregular with hamartomas, um, and the location, size, and distribution here are not characteristic for septic emboli and necrobiotic lung nodules. Uh, let's combine this with the differential diagnosis we came up when approaching this um, as a lung mass um, to uh, kind of come up with uh, this uh, more complete uh, list of possibilities. Primary lung cancer um, and lung metastases would be unusual in a 31-year-old woman, um, and so we're left with this kind of uh, shorter list here. The diagnosis in this renal transplant recipient was ultimately invasive aspergillosis. What's the best approach to confirming a diagnosis of invasive aspergillosis? Because of the bleeding risk associated with biopsying invasive aspergillosis, we generally like to avoid biopsy if we can. Diagnostic avenues include serum biomarkers and culture and stain of either sputum or lavage samples. How is invasive aspergillosis managed? Options include antifungals and reducing immunosuppression. What's your differential diagnosis? The differential diagnosis for this larger nodule is this list here. This particular case ended up being an example of histoplasmosis. What are the imaging presentations of histoplasmosis infection. Histoplasmosis infections can present in different ways, including lung nozzles, lung masses, consolidation resembling focal conventional pneumonia, a reactivation TB pattern, and even a miliary pattern in hematogenously disseminated cases.